Greetings, nerds. This is Will Polk, co-host and producer of the Cena Nerd Podcast with your host, Sarah Belmont. Thank you so much for joining me today and on Cena Nerd Presents the Interviews. Today, we have a very special guest, Michael Brandon Wright of MBW Films. He is a short filmmaker and also has done some podcast reviews. If you go to his YouTube channel, he's got a bunch of great stuff there as far as uh, Avatar and some of the other Prometheus and some other uh, film reviews he's done in the past. But uh, we're very excited to have him here today to talk about a film that he has had on the uh, friend of the podcast film festival circuit, uh, Geek the Geek Film Fest, uh, a short film that he uh, released and is on that tour right now and is actually an award-winning film. And it is called Dunendez. And we are happy to have you join us here today, Michael. Thank you for joining us here on the podcast. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. I uh, can't wait to get into it. Yeah, looking forward to it as well. But we always ask our guests, of course, we're in the middle, we are recording today, uh, July 5th. Uh, we just had a big month of premieres of shows in June uh, with House of the Dragon, The Boys. Uh, the Bear, Star Wars. What are you watching these days? I'm sure our, fa our fans would uh, like to know what uh, have you been able to catch up with these latest se seasons of these shows, or uh, are you just waiting for them all to end and and then binge them? <laughs> uh, yeah, it depends on the show. But I, House of the Dragon, I'm definitely watching that uh, currently. Uh, Game of Thrones was one of my favorite shows. Um, normally, I'm not like a big like fantasy person i'm more into sci-fi but yeah. i guess in terms of fantasy game of thrones is definitely my favorite and i was really into that like most people the last season you know disappointed by that but yeah. you know up until then it was it was amazing i really loved it cool cool yeah yeah well you so I'm, I'm a newcomer to the whole game of thrones i didn't watch the original series but i, I joined in house of the dragon and uh really been enjoying that universe so uh, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's I'm really enjoying season two. But uh, we're not here to talk about House of the Dragon. We're here to talk about you and your shows. But uh, tell us about your your short film Dunendez. I will. I, I I did get a chance to watch it. It's, it's available uh, not only on the film circuit, but also if folks want to go to your YouTube channel. You can you can watch it there. So tell me about that film. And am I pronouncing it correctly? Let's make sure. You know, it's it is hard to say because it's a, a Spanish word. It's a Latin American folklore. But yeah. it's it's basically duendes. That's how you say it. Duendes, okay, yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's based on a Latin American folklore, and uh, a duende is like a kind of like a goblin, a forest goblin creature in mm -hmm. in that culture. And depending on you know what specific region you're talking about, it'll change like how they interpret it. You know, whether it's Mexico or um, other places like or, you know, Argentina or even Spain itself. You know, every country kind of has a different version. I kind of went the the far end of the like horror uh, evil spectrum, but some cultures see them as good things. But basically, mm -hmm. I came across it uh, by my wife, who is uh, Mexican, mm -hmm. and she I forgot how she even brought it up, but it was just kind of like some casual thing, like, oh, it sounds like the Duendes. You know, I've never heard of it, so obviously. When, what is that? Like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And she told me about what it is, or at least how her her mom would tell the story, which from the get-go, I was just like, this is a children's tale, like mm -hmm. these goblins that um, I mean, if you watch the film, you'll, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about, but yeah. essentially they'll, you know, they live in the forest, they can follow you home, live in your walls, at night they'll come out and they, if, you, if your feet are exposed, like while you're sleeping, will trim your toenails and then sometimes like cut your toe off just mm -hmm. uh, because they, they like it apparently uh, <laughs> or worse. Uh, so it's just really interesting that that was like a, a children's folk tale. And once I heard that, I knew, and she told me about this a couple years ago. Yeah. It's not something that's very common. You know, I haven't really seen much on it. So I just knew like, Oh, I wanted to bring that to light more and, you know, do something with it. And I made a little short film, eight minute short film, um that i do plan on expanding on in the future but that's you know as it stands now it's the one i have the eight and a half minute film yeah now yeah and it's a it's a really enjoyable short film i um 
did see in a, in a see the, the folklore and everything that was that was in the film and and the the time periods and you know where it was the you know, locations where your 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 star found himself in as far as in, in as far as in the in the in the forest and and, and all and so how did you uh so you did it all correct so you, you wrote yeah. this directed cast yeah. did, you, yeah. did you also finance it or how do you how does that work as far as a short film yeah i mean literally everything and not really by choice just uh out of necessity and um because I know people, it's part of it's based on my location right now. I'm kind of separated from most people I know that are filmmakers or uh, in it, except for, I guess, actually, even Cole Gray, who was the lead actor. Uh, we always work together, and he lives in Woodland Hills area, which, and I live in Lake Havasu, Arizona. So it's like a four and a half, five hour difference. And I used to, I went to school, uh, college with him in the valley at Woodland Hills, California. Um, and that's how I met him. Um, so yeah, just mainly based out of necessity, I financed it myself, which literally the whole budget was the costume. Uh, okay. And in terms of the filming, uh, I did everything myself, the editing. Um, I even played the Duende. You can't tell, obviously, because it's like I'm fully covered in this costume. But um, yeah, and then, you know, if I was in the scene, then uh, it would either be on a tripod or Cole would be filming me. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. So as far as that process of, of creating a film, I know this was, so you've done some prior short films in the past. Let's look at your filmography on IMDb and also your website. Um, and I know you shared some of the background as far as your your your, your personal heritage, as far as your wife, and you know, she was sharing this, this folklore. What, what prompted you to, to do this film now? Um, that's a, that's a good question. It, I guess when it comes to how I work on stuff, it's more of like, I might think of an idea. It'll, I'll kind of stew on it for a while. Mm -hmm. It takes me a long time to write stuff. That's definitely my weak point is I can come up with tons of ideas, uh, that I love, but like in terms of sitting down and writing a script, it just takes me forever. I'm not the best script writer in general also. And Cole actually helps me out. He's a, I feel like he's a better writer than me and he definitely mm -hmm. can get it done quicker. Um, so with Duendes and Mask of Evil, he helped me write both of those. Um, and I don't know, it's more of like a feeling, I guess, mm -hmm. and you know, right place, right time kind of thing. Um, and like I said, the whole budget was that costume, which I financed myself. So it was just like, a, a part of it was, you know, I, I had the funds available to do it and I don't know. It, it's also hard for me to fit stuff in, obviously, with uh, work and family. I have two kids. Uh, one of them was um, my son was born about two months ago. So, congratulations! Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. And obviously, that uh, it's just hard in general, you know. So it's whenever I can yeah. find time, basically. Yeah, tell me. Look, let's expand on that a little bit. As far as because you are an independent filmmaker, you make your own projects and trying to balance. And, and like many folks who are in the independent film space, you know, you're not supported by a big studio or anything like that, or 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 have you know that those types of resources. So trying to juggle your your daily responsibilities as far as just you know, your day job and then being an independent filmmaker. How do you you know as far as if you if you had you know have the opportunity here on this platform to to talk to other independent filmmakers who are struggling with trying to do that balance, what what words of advice would you have for them as far as trying to strike that balance, especially if you're doing it all like you were? Uh, it's hard, man. It's uh, I don't even know if I have the answer. The main thing I would say, I guess, is just no matter what happens which I guess part of it might be your personality because in my case, you know, no matter what's going on in my life, that drive to want to do that will always be there mm -hmm. to my detriment sometimes. Cause I'm like, you know, it can affect other things. Um, uh, you know, quality family time or even work. Um, just cause like I've always had that, um, uh, desire to want to do that and I don't see it ever going away, but I guess, one thing that can help is, you know, it's the cliched thing 
never give up, I guess. But mm-hmm. really, it's I feel like a lot of stuff kind of, uh, at least in my case, it feels like it has been this way, which is like things just happen when they're meant to happen. The key mm-hmm. is to just never give up, you know. But if it doesn't happen the, when you want it to, you know, let's say it's two weeks from now, just keep at it and it'll happen when it's meant to happen as long as you don't ever stop trying. And that's just kind of my mentality with it, I guess. And that's cool. that's really what it, all I would say because I don't really have, you know, I'm still tr- I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to balance it properly my own mm-hmm. in my own life. So it's it's yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah, but 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 on the flip side, there it's very rewarding whenever the work that you have put into it is recognized. For example, this when this has been recognized as a in in, in the recent film circuit. So share share that feeling as far as when you learned about it. I know you, I don't think you were able to attend. I think Cole accepted the award on your on your, your behalf. But um, you know, whenever you did get that call and that text that you won, tell us tell us that feeling. It's definitely cool, especially since it's, you know, it was a voted thing. Um, obviously it's awesome no matter how you win something, but for, you know, Cole and his uh, now wife were the only people I knew there and people voted on it saying that they liked it. So obviously that was amazing. You know, I can't really hope for much more that whatever audience is watching it likes it, especially enough to vote it um, as the best one in that category. So it felt great, you know, it's, you know, a lot of it is like most people don't make stuff, you know, for an audience of one, they might kind of say that they're doing it for themselves and in a way they are, I would feel that way too. But at the same time, you want people to like it. So it just felt great. Obviously I wish I could have been there, but uh, it was just my son had just been born. It was just like too quick for me to, yeah. drive five hours and spend time to do that but and i'm really glad it won and i can't say that uh for the la comic-con tour stop i'll be at that one for sure so oh cool, cool great great and that, that la comic-con is coming up in october is that when that yeah, is october or, yeah. or being beginning of october sometime okay cool cool well i'll, I'll be i'm sure pe- folks will be happy to to see it there and and also be able to meet with you and the the i guess the you as the cast crew director producer and your <laughs> film crew please stand uh, up it's just me and cole you know? yeah <laughs> yeah but uh, that's awesome that's awesome so yeah so i know that's the highs of filmmaking but also as an independent filmmaker you've also recently you've had some frustrations as an independent filmmaker with your uh your your halloween project i know right before we were discussing you shared with me the uh, video mask of evil and uh and i know on your channel you've talked about some of your experiences with that fan film so tell me a little bit how tell me a little bit more about your your um foray into fan filmmaking and, and your experiences both positive and negative with what what we've uh with uh halloween yeah um the fan film started out uh i made it after dwin days and I was kind of in between projects because I have my what I thought was going to be my next project after Duendes, which I'm still going to do. But I knew I wasn't going to be able to do it when I wanted, so I had some downtime. It was coming up on October, I guess maybe because uh, the city where I live in on Halloween night they like closed down like the downtown area and uh, mm-hmm. people trick or treat, uh, not just kids but adults. Like people dressed up, and if you watch the film, you'll like all the footage with all those people um, where I'm like with my daughter, who's my actual daughter, um, you know, that was all gorilla filmed um, during that event. So it was just like the perfect thing for me to use for that. And combination of that. And I just happened to be watching some Halloween fan films and I don't know, it just inspired me to like, Hey, I think I could use that and I want to do it. And I was kind of spitballing ideas with Cole who helped me write it and was in it. Um, yeah, and we just came up with an idea that we both loved. He came up with uh, the element and my fan film, which is my was looking for his childhood clown mask. And it all just clicked, and uh, it worked out great. And then actually, filming that was probably the most like satisfying uh, film that I've shot myself. So it was a lot of fun. I'm really glad I did it. 
Cool, cool. Now I know uh, I saw the trailer and stuff, and you 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 posted the film, and then and then you something that you everyone ever hates whenever they're putting creating something, you got a copyright strike. So what what was your what was your what happened? What went through your mind? Um, explain to our audience for someone who's as you said felt super engaged, happy with the product you created. Get that get that feeling. And get that uh, the notification. It it uh, it was devastating for sure, especially since in terms of like online response, it was getting the best out of anything I've ever done uh, mm -hmm. organically. Uh, you know, I was getting a lot of views, and it wasn't slowing down every day. A lot of likes, a lot of comments. It was uh, in a Dread Central article. I, I you know found its way there. It was just like so many good things were happening, and then. I remember I I had checked it. Um, it was like two a.m. or something, and I woke up and I was just curious. I checked it and like the video is not coming up. You know, mm -hmm. I'm trying to find out what's going on, freaking out, and like the video is just gone off of my thing, and it wasn't showing on my phone. But when I went on the computer, it said that you know copyright strike, it was removed, and this and that. And at the time, I thought I was the you know it was just my film but apparently i found out a couple days later that the studio took down a couple other ones um, mm. and we uh <laughs> we formed kind of like a little support group on facebook like what's going on why would they do this blah 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 and uh before that had happened i um i went through the process which is either you file a counterclaim which i did like instantly rejected they didn't forward it to the studio youtube didn't and then I emailed them and I just figured, oh, you know, they're just going to ignore it. They're never going to respond. Surprisingly, they did respond to me through email. So I, I did was I did have contact with them and I even spoke to, I don't know if I should name um, specifically, but, and it's a small studio, so there's not too many people, but it was a high level guy that I spoke to uh, who handles mm -hmm. like the legal stuff, which was a nice touch because like I said, I was expecting them to ignore me, but they actually took the time to, speak to me on the phone, but there's like a whole thing. I do plan to make like another video on it going into more detail, like on my channel about what happened with that and <clears throat> more opinions. So I don't want to take too much time, but yeah, it was devastating. Uh, I don't agree with how they handled that or the reasons for it. And um, I think a big part of it is the, like the impending TV show they're making mm. and they use the fact that it was in the dread central article, even though that, you know, they were kind of blaming me for that. You'd think that's a great thing, but it was just a combination of too many things that they didn't like. So they went after my film basically. Yeah. Yeah. That really sucks. I mean, I know there's, I know uh, whenever I saw your video, I have, couldn't help but think about another big franchise, uh, Star Trek. There's been a big fan film at the X in Ireland, if you're familiar with the whole drama that that fan film has had with Paramount. And um, many years, I mean, to the point where they threatened, you know, we went to litigation, went, you know, settled all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I, at least they didn't sue you, but at the same time, it was. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it was frustrating the same and uh but the, it, you know but the fact that they did reach out you know whenever you did reach out to them and they they did follow up um uh, you know definitely will you know look forward to, to hearing more thoughts and, and more details about that that process and uh things you've learned uh you know as as as, as far as being a creative uh making sure that other creatives uh don't that learn from your experiences and and hopefully we can you know create products that you know celebrate the things we love, but at the same time uh, respect the, the you know the studios and and they don't like you know come after us for uh, any you know strikes or whatever. Yeah, and and just to add a little more to that, uh, I would have some advice for anyone that does it. I know in my case, I'm never going to make one again just because it was not you know that. Even though I think the film is better now with the changes mm -hmm. I made. You know, it's still not a sure thing they could really take it down again if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's still a sore subject. But uh, yeah, if you do make a fan film, use as little as possible. You know, the bare minimum that makes it a fan film, which is kind of weird because it's like it's not a fan film unless you do certain things. Like in Halloween, you got to use like 
a Michael Myers mask. You know, there's multiple versions of it, but you can't not do that. Then it's not a fan film anymore. So right. in my case, that's what I try to do with the new version is literally slash everything except for that. And, you know, that includes music scores, which most Halloween fan films, they use the original uh, score from the movies, which I did in mine. And I got rid of that and did an original one. So that's what I would recommend is just use as little as possible and just whoever owns the rights can do that at any time. You know, they don't have to have a good reason. They, they just can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's turn, let's turn to uh, something more positive here as far as your experiences. I know you mentioned you're working on some other, uh, other projects right now. Can you uh, share with us? Uh, what, what do you have in the pipeline? Um, yeah, I have a, uh, it's kind of hard to talk about it because the less you know about it, the better, but it's the log line is basically a, a do well dad, uh, receives a six pack of beer on his doorstep. Uh, is it a sign to live a little or a sign of something more? Hmm. And basically it's, just how it sounds is a six pack of beer is delivered to this dad's doorstep is, you know, a do well dad. He doesn't really drink. He doesn't really do much of anything. And, uh, I'll just say some the chaos ensues after that. Oh, hmm. it's, Very it's, interesting. Uh, it's a hybrid, you know, kind of transcends different genres, but I'd say mainly it's a horror sci-fi. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. And just looking at your IMDB and your, and your, um, your uh, short first uh, bio had had uh, some other, you had another uh, sci-fi horror film earlier in your career. Was it Americon or? Americon. Americon, yeah, yeah. That, um, yeah, I made that in um, 2016. That was like okay. my first actual film and it's a sci-fi film. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Um, well, it, it, when do you anticipate that your the project you just shared with us uh, is that be, maybe later this year? Looking at next year, when, when do you think it'll be released? Yeah, I'm <clears throat> probably shoot it in uh, a couple of months from now, and so yeah, probably at this point next year. It's more of a matter of uh, uh, since my son was born, you know, son yeah. was born, things have slowed down in terms of filmmaking, but. Uh, yeah, it's still in the pipeline, so I'd probably say sometime next year it'll be released. Maybe some smaller oh. stuff in between that. Okay, cool, cool. So I know you mentioned you'll be at LA Comic Con. Are you going to be at any other uh, film festivals coming up uh, here over the next few months? Um, I think they, uh, I might be at the Rose City one. Okay. Or no, R Rose City. Is that in California or is that in? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. They have one that I thought was in California, but it was like in Oregon or something. Okay. There's, there's uh, the LA one. And then I think they have one more that's in California. I might be at that one in terms of the geek fest. Yeah. And then I, I have submitted uh, mask of evil to a couple festivals and uh, it got into some online ones already. And uh, I would think it would get into at least one or two, uh, in person ones, so I might be going to those depending on which one it is. Cool, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Before we uh, before we wrap up, I want to give you the opportunity to share uh, where people can find your work, uh, whether it's your website, social media handles, and, and other places. So um, please please feel free to do so now. Uh, yeah, my social media on everything is MBW videos. Um, you know, Instagram, X, Facebook. Uh, one of my channels is MBW videos. And then that's more like YouTube content reviews, like you mentioned, uh, like I have one on Prometheus. <clears throat> and then uh, my films, MBW films uh, on YouTube. But you can find either one and like they're linked to each other. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Michael, so much for your time. I really, really enjoyed talking with you here today on our Cena Nerd Presents the interviews. Um, look forward to seeing the next project you have out there. And thank you for sharing uh, the recut version of uh, Mask of Evil. Hopefully this time it will be able to um, survive any challenges and people can, can see it and enjoy it because it really is a very 
uh, I really enjoyed watching it and uh, really captures the spirit of Halloween, which, uh, you know, as any fan film, have, you want you want that to capture that, and it definitely does. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, I feel like this one will be okay. It's, I'm going to go about it a little differently in how I promote it as well. And then I do want to give a quick shout-out to Cole's yeah. channel, which is Cole Gray Comedy. Um, that's his Instagram and YouTube. Um, and that's... The, the funny thing is like, you know, the stuff, the films I make are like horror sci-fi and he's usually a part of it, but he's a comedian really. And yeah. <clears throat> I actually am in a lot of his videos, you know, acting a comedic role too. And he's the funniest person I know. So if you want to laugh, go check out his channel. He's uh, got hundreds of comedy videos and they're all awesome. Great. Great. Well, I'll be sure to put both your links and his link in the uh, in our description in the show notes for this so people can be can find both of your channels and work uh to keep uh keep more people you know getting exposed to your, your work and, and sharing it so i really do appreciate your time and, and joining us today and uh, wish you all the best uh with your upcoming upcoming films and your career and uh hopefully yeah, and, and we'd love to have you back on sometime to uh, talk about some additional projects you're working on I would love to do that. Thank you again. Thanks so much for having me on.